If we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. My, how the coin has flipped as we saw Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, laying out the vision of exclusive titles on that platform. And at the time, how Bethesda was going to fit into that mission. Two years later, the internet is ablaze, rumors are swirling, and Phil has once again had to respond. Welcome back to the channel. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and I hesitated just a bit when the first Xbox exclusives coming over to PS5 rumors began trickling out because where there's smoke, there's fire, and I felt that more would be coming, and it has arrived. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my future upload alerts, and let's get into the latest from Xbox and the future of this platform. Okay, so like two days ago, I was working on a video script completely isolated from social media and my DMs just started going off the fucking rails. Dude, check this out. What's going on? Can you believe it? And I was like, sorry guys, I'm lost. What are you talking about? And it was all about this report posted to Xbox Era's website. Exclusive Microsoft plans Starfield launch for PlayStation 5 which in itself is packed with massive buzzwords with huge implications. Just take these three, Microsoft, Starfield, PlayStation, which the only time I can remember seeing those three together is when it was announced that Microsoft was planning for Starfield to be an Xbox exclusive. So it would therefore not be coming to PlayStation. And for weeks now, we had heard those ever so quiet whispers about Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves and how Microsoft was possibly, at that time, allegedly making a shift to release those first-party titles onto its rival platform, PlayStation, which, by the way, would never reciprocate that transfer. This was always going to be a one-way street. But then the H-bomb drops, once again reported on by Xbox Era. According to their sources, who wish to remain anonymous, that list of first-party games was also set to include Bethesda's first new universe in 25 years, Starfield. Talk about stunned. I mean, I was there and then some. Not that I'm tied to any platform. I have no skin in the console wars game. I am 100% a PC gamer, and the only war I truly want to wage is for great games to be released on all platforms and to end the bullshit of exclusivity rights. But that's really not here nor there, just my passion for the fact bubbling over. Anyways, the rumored Starfield to PlayStation shift was reportedly to happen later in 2024 once the Shattered Space DLC dropped. I'm sure there are other sources out there, other outlets that have spoken with Microsoft insiders and so on, and I might not get the exact starting points correct, but the information is going to end up the same. So that's like two days ago, then we bounced to yesterday-ish, and the reports have now expanded to upcoming titles? What? Is now Indiana Jones and the Great Circle has also entered the debate. And at this point, you instantly start to look past the flashing headlines. Things like Starfield, Hi-Fi Rush, Indiana Jones, and people started trying to peek now behind the curtain and asking the questions, what the hell has happened over at Microsoft? Was this a full-blown corporate shootout over at Microsoft HQ where the bean counters actually won out? Because now it's gone from the possibility of a couple of lesser-known, possibly older first-party titles actually getting ported over to PlayStation, which in itself is still crazy to say, to then adding in Starfield, to then an upcoming Bethesda release in Indiana Jones, and of course, everyone just starts piling on at this point. You've got Jeff Grubb reporting on this matter over on his podcast, Game Mess. I started seeing tweets from Tom Warren now confirming that t-shirt designs were found in the actual game files by data miners showing that Hi-Fi Rush was set to come to PlayStation. It then devolves into pandemonium, especially over on Twitter. You've got hardcore Xbox supporters feeling betrayed, PlayStation supporters egging them on, some more even-keeled messages about 
how they support the move. And I'm not promoting any of these stances. I'm just reporting on what is happening here. So don't take it out on me in the comment section, please. And if you're able to see past all of the noise and just start applying a little bit of thought process to this, I mean, if things were leaking that were grossly incorrect and could potentially do immense harm to both Xbox and the Microsoft brand, they would have said something to correct it, right? I mean, someone would have stepped up to the mic and explained it all as a fabrication based on no facts at all. Don't worry, folks. All is as it should be at Xbox and they didn't, which for many just instantly sealed the deal. Huge rumors that could damage the company and simultaneously piss off a lot of longtime Xbox supporters allowed to fester out there for days and no response, no rebuttal from Xbox. I mean, that's just a confirmation before you ever even need to ask the question. And these theories were further solidified when Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, set off this mildly worded tweet as of about 20 hours ago. Quote, we're listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. And instantly for me, I thought back to Hudson's line from Aliens. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. No denials, not anything contrary to what was being blasted all over Twitter. I even read a new, even more updated report earlier today that the Xbox announcement event was actually scheduled for the end of this month. But after everything that has now taken place, they decided to move it up to next week. Let's be clear, this has rocked the gaming industry to its very foundations. Heck, even Larian Studios, director of publishing, actually weighed in with a counterpunch to those saying that Xbox becoming third party is bad. People's minds have been absolutely blown by Microsoft's controversial strategy to get more people playing Xbox games by releasing them to a broader range of people. Let me give you some optimism. The fact that so many vocal and active Xbox players means there's an audience. If there's an audience, there's opportunity. Your favorite ecosystem isn't going anywhere, but strategies shift with the times to make sure the economics makes sense. And he finishes up with, in spite of Xbox games being on Game Pass, PC, and Xbox, they habitually make Steam top sellers at full price. Why wouldn't they want to make more money of games, thereby reducing risk, while at the same time being able to say, well, over here, it's basically free. I can say that he has some valid points here. I mean, it's not the easiest pill to swallow, that's for sure, especially for those that live Xbox, which, by the way, again, I've already placed myself firmly in the PC crowd, so I'm not going hardcore in either direction. I can see all the sides of this one, and there is a ton of heated rhetoric coming from all angles. I will say this and ask a couple questions of you though. If Xbox does choose to go this route, which in the past two years would be a complete 180 from their previous course, but for the sake of argument, let's just say that they do. At that point, all Xbox releases will live on whatever platform a gamer chooses to play on. Why would anyone then choose to purchase a physical Xbox? And believe me, I'm not throwing gas on the fire here. I think it's a legitimate question. Why? Because if they're all going to end up on PlayStation in the end, why not just buy or keep that PS5, play all the PlayStation first party titles as they release, and then maybe a few months down the road, get those Xbox releases, uh, assuming that they would give Game Pass subscription holders a few months early access over PlayStation. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just all go straight to the platform on day one. I mean, if Xbox gets out of exclusives, you would see things like Gears of War, Halo, Forza, all migrate over to PlayStation, effectively giving PlayStation a monopoly on the major console market. Wow, this is all wild news. And the end of 2023 into the beginning of 2024 has proven to be one bombshell after the next. I'm waiting with anticipation for next week's broadcast to see Phil and the rest of the crew. And I'm really eager to see how they try to spin this into a positive because that's going to be a difficult climb for sure. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell to receive my upload alerts. All my socials can be found in the video description, including Twitter and Discord. And I try to stay active on both, so seek me out. 
Shout out to the now over 191,000 of you that have stuck with me. And if you haven't already, help me out. Hit that sub button as we make that last little push up to 200,000 subscribers. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer signing off.